is the customers don't want something that maybe you can produce a little bit more cheaply, okay? That is deception. It's dishonest. It's fraud. It should not be enabled at the federal level by overturning the Tenth Amendment. I'm very disappointed in Rand Paul. We need to have these discussions. We need to be able to criticize people, and we will criticize people when we disagree with them. As I said before, he is the only one who is talking about massive NSA surveillance. He has offered legislation to try to stop this. He's filibustered on issues of civil liberties. He's talked about the out-of-control police state. These are issues that are not being talked about, unfortunately, in the debates. Why not? Well, because the New York Times points out CNN hopes to capture tomorrow night the candidate's combative spirit in the GOP debate. Remember when Megyn Kelly aimed her lip gloss at Donald Trump and said, you don't like women, do you? I mean, that's the kind of juvenile elementary school personal attacks that you're going to get on mainstream media because this is a reality TV show. They don't want to talk about any substantive issues. They're going to focus on the same four or five issues that they do every election cycle and they're going to focus on people's personalities. This is nothing but a, it's silly, but we're going to cover it tomorrow night. <laughs> we're going to cover it and we're going to point it out. And we're going to point out how they're distracting you from things that can really make a difference. Jeff has been holding on a long time to talk about Hillary. And I want to talk about Hillary as well. Uh, Jeff in Missouri, you want to talk about in game with Hillary. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, just before I make that point, uh, you and Alex uh, numerous times have kind of sounded the horn of Gundor to all of us info warriors out here to kind of step up and play a more prominent role in the info war. And quite frankly, sir, I have done that very thing. I've started a new podcast called It's Me Speaking to You. Uh, it's me, S-P-K-N, the number two, the letter U. Um, it's pretty much just a conversation about a variety of topics with a variety of guests. I recently had on uh, InfoWars reporter Joe Biggs. Awesome interview. Go check that out. Great. Um, a couple point, a couple, another point um, on the on the abortion stuff. I don't know either, uh, David. It makes me quite sick, and I don't understand. It's quite endemic of the bizarre world that we live in, where up is down, down is up, good is bad, bad is good. I don't know how much longer people can have that stuff be sh uh, shown right in front of their face, and, and nobody goes to jail. Uh, my final point on Donald Trump. It seems to me like this is like you are exactly right. This is a reality show. It's a reality TV show, and it's no surprise that the leader on the Republican Party right now hosted one of the most popular reality TV shows ever. Um, I think he's. This is quite WWE. I think his pseudo uh, no holds barred loquaciousness is is just is just that. It's a show. If he was really saying something, and it's similar to Edward Edward Snowden. Edward Snowden didn't necessarily say anything we didn't already know about NSA surveillance. I want to hear these guys talk about 9-11. I want to hear talk about the, gun, the, the drug war, the training of ISIS, you know, Hillary Clinton needing to be in prison for her role in Benghazi. Uh, it's absolutely insane, sir, and it's madness. And the, the end game for Hillary, I, that's what I'm asking. I wonder, is she going to make it to the, to, the Democrat, to the general election? Is this stuff going to take her down? I don't see how she could make it with her track record of such wicked illegality, sir. Well, that's a good point, and, and thank you for setting up a podcast. And as I was pointing out before, we need to understand that there's a lot that we can do at the local level. And I want to, you know, I think it's important for people to do things that are going to be focused on their state and local community as well. We all focus on the national news, and of course, we have a national operation here. But we also try to reach out in many cases and talk to people on the local level. I have a friend back in North Carolina who set up a website that just focuses on state issues exclusively. I think it's important for us to understand that we can make very, very powerful change at the local and the state level. But having said that, I, I want to go back to uh, Hillary Clinton. You asked, where's she going to go with this? I think it just keeps getting worse for her. I mean, she's fallen down 20% in the polls and Here's what she said yesterday. This, she actually came out and said to sexual assault victims, you have the right to be heard. You have the right to be believed. She said, today I want to send a message to every survivor of sexual assault. Don't let anyone silence your voice. You have a right to be heard, to believe, be believed. We're with you. There's a big divide, Hillary said, between survivors who do not want to seek the criminal justice system for different reasons and those who want to but are not sure that it would be responsible. This is Hillary Clinton saying this. Uh, does anybody remember what happened when all of these women came out? I mean, he, we had women coming out against Bill Clinton like they came out against, against uh, Bill Cosby. And, of course, she didn't have any support for that or any sympathy for that. 
just completely ignored the whole slew of people, drug them through the mud. She said, so we need to do a much better job on the fairness of response so people don't feel like whichever route they go on campus or off, that they're going to be taken seriously. That doesn't mean that, you know, that there's no process. There has to be one. But I think when someone makes the claim when they come forward, they should be believed. That's what starts the process. This is Hillary Clinton saying this. And so Twitchy, that looks at Twitter because she not only said that in a speech, but she actually tweeted it out. Rape is a crime. Whenever it happens, Hillary, to every survivor of sexual assault, you have the right to be heard. You have the right to be believed or with you. Hillary, really? Really? <laughs> like, their headline is Zowie. Did Hillary Clinton really just say this about rape? I mean, it is absolutely amazing, the hypocrisy of this woman. How long can she get away with this? And I think the Democrat Party rightfully understands that she is a huge liability. I think they have looked at these emails as an opportunity to take her down without doing a lot of uh, a lot of collateral damage to people around her. In other words, this is something that I think they believe they can focus in on her. And I think that's why we see it being investigated, because there's been so many crimes that they could have come after the Clintons for, could have come after Hillary Clinton for. But they don't want to go in and pull down the pillars of the temple and have it collapse on all of their friends. So this is something I think that they can look at and and they can keep this damage uh, confined to Hillary Clinton. I think they will do it. Uh, I think that uh, it certainly has taken a toll on her. Uh, she's at 30 percent still, but she's in second place with these polls that have come out this last week. And you got to understand she's at 30 percent in a field that only has, uh, you know, Two to four people. I mean, it's really only a two-person race right now. But uh, Joe Biden, who hasn't even announced, uh, I think people are going to see him as a much more stable candidate. And as I said yesterday, even though I strongly disagree with Joe Biden, uh, he he took a position on uh, natural rights during the uh, during the confirmation hearings of Clarence Thomas that I feel was as un-American as anything I've ever heard in my life. Uh, but he is somebody known for his gaffes. But another way to look at that in 2015, a gaffe is called authenticity. And it is something that will take him a long way, especially if we look at what would have been terminal gaffes from uh, Donald Trump in the past. I want to go to uh, Stephen in Florida. You've been waiting a long time. Before I do, real quickly, I want to tell people that we have uh, InfoWars Life Select. It's a new product line. We have massively reduced prices for the two-week introductory period. And, you know, as I was talking about the, the back and forth in the agricultural business about whether or not they're going to accurately label their food, they don't want people to know that it's got GMOs in it. We are very proud of the fact that this storable food does not have GMOs in it. We're proud of that. We want you to know that it is high quality. So we make a point of telling people that it is sourced with non-GMO materials. It doesn't have any MSG either. It doesn't have any autolyzed yeast extract. This is made in the U.S. It is packaged in the U.S. And the packaging is something that not only works well in terms of space saving, but lasts a very long time, too. We've tried to get very high-grade mylar to protect it. This is military-grade. It protects it against light, oxygen, moisture. It allows it to last for 25 years. And once you open it up, you can reseal it to use it uh, the next day or so, a couple of meals. Uh, you can reseal it with a Ziploc package. So it's good quality food. It's in great packaging. And these introductory prices are the lowest prices you'll find anywhere. Listen to this. A two-week food supply, $79.96. A four-week food supply, $156. Do you spend more than $156 on one month of food for yourself? I mean, that is incredibly, incredibly affordable. Now is a good time to stock up on that. If you get a three-month order or greater, you can get kits that are balanced with different meals like breakfast, lunch, dinner, drinks, and snacks if you get a three-month kit. Again, that's our new line, InfoWars Select, and you can find that at, here's the website. I don't even have the website here. It's so new, but you can find it, InfoWarsSelect.com. That's where you'll find those new products. Now, I want to go to uh, Stephen in Florida. You've been waiting for a very long time. Thank you for holding. You want to talk about pledging to Allah. Go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, David. Uh, yeah, you did a report about this, and I watched most of it. And then what I did was I'm very proactive, and I appreciate the work that you folks do because it helps me to speak authoritatively because you document everything so well when I address these issues myself. So 
what I did was I actually looked up Spring Hill Middle School in Tennessee. I called the number. I got a woman there, and uh, basically she took the line, we have nothing to do with this. You need to speak to the Tennessee, um, you know, board of whatever, <laughs> you know, it's, it's yeah. them, you know, they're setting the curriculum, and of course it's part of Common Core, as you brought out. Mm-hmm. And I just told her, I said, so let me get this right, because I asked for the principal. I said, so you're telling me that the principal and all you folks during the administration have no say in this matter, just have to go along with this. Yeah, that's right. I said, ma'am, I said, you're the reason why this nation's going down. Yes. And I, I was not real happy with them. So here's the bottom line. I, I hung up, finished what I had to say. Well, I got a call from them. And it was Officer So-and-so. I don't know what his, I, don't, I didn't get his name, but he said he's with the school district there. And I, I want to give the number out. And I'm hoping Alex will do what he did to Pierce Morgan. And that is school these people publicly. Because this guy proceeded to tell me that me and others like me, and I mentioned Alex Jones and InfoWars, are ignorant. We're uneducated. We don't know what's going on. And we need to understand that this is part of the way things are. We just basically have to accept it. And I told this man, I said, I'm an American. I'm a Christian. I'm a father. He told me because I have no kids in that school district, I have no right to call them. I'm in this country, and I have a, uh, and I told him I have a constitutional right to do this, and I'm concerned about the direction the country is going in. And, you know, he gave me all this line and stuff and basically told me that, you know, people like InfoWars don't know what they're talking about, and they're probably just blowing gas. And wow. so anyway, I'd like to well, give the number. Well, I can't let you give the number out because, you know, people can call and, and I, I, I believe you, but we can't, as a, as a legal uh, issue, let you give out the number on the, um, on the air. But I tell you what, give it to the screener. We will follow up with this and we'll try to do an article and, and uh, contact them on this. Steve, that, that is exactly what needs to be done. That's what I've been saying. We need to get involved at the local level. I really appreciate you doing this and fighting on this. And what you found there is exactly what the problem is. People have abdicated the control of their schools. Remember, it was when I was a child, all control of the schools was in the local community. And I've watched it devolve uh, during my lifetime where the control has, has, flow, has flowed from the local area to the state and now from the state to the centralized federal government. And that's not really where the control is. The control is really with Bill Gates and a few people who are writing this Common Core curriculum. And everybody needs to understand that Jeb Bush is intricately involved in Common Core. He thinks it's a great thing. Remember in that first debate when they said, this organization that you were in gave $10 million to Planned Parenthood. He goes, oh, wait a minute, I was a director there, but we put that together to push Common Core, not to fund Planned Parenthood, even though they did fund Planned Parenthood, even though they were pushing Common Core. That's the kind of person that Jeb Bush is. But what you did is exactly what people need to do. And they need to get in touch with these people and give them a piece of their mind. We need to shut off the centralized control, we can shut it off at the local level. We just need to have the right people. We need to have the backbone to do that, Steve. Yeah, there. and I, I just, yeah, I just want to say in closing that this man told me, well, you're a Christian, right? And I said, yes, sir. He said, well, then you don't, you're not supposed to judge. See, what they're saying is we're supposed to be like them. Go along as blind, mindless fools. And I told him, I said, sir, when you cooperate with evil, it comes back to bite you. Satan always eats his own. So you go ahead and cooperate with this, and eventually you're going to go down with this system. Well, you know, that whole judge not so that you not be judged, that is, along with Romans 13, the uh, two verses that I think are used the most out of context to shut up Christians. Uh, that's not what that's talking about. We are supposed to understand the difference between good and evil. We are supposed to get involved in our local uh, government to the extent that we have an involvement. We are supposed to stand up for the defenseless, for the fatherless, for others. Uh, that's not what uh, judging is about. Uh, we do know the difference between good and evil. That's uh, one of the things that we understand as Christians. But that's precisely what we need to do is we need to stand up at the local level. We need to elect people at local school boards that are going to stand against the centralization of education. Because we all need to understand that this control of education is social engineering. It is not education. Johnny can't read because they didn't want Johnny to read. They want Johnny to be dumbed down. We talked about this yesterday. It's a deliberate dumbing down. Charlotte Isserby pointed that out along with Phyllis Schlafly 30 years ago, that it's a deliberate dumbing down. 
and it is a deliberate takeover of our children. That's why they want to put them in school at an earlier and earlier age. I mean, one of the things that you can do as an individual, if you're listening, is take control of your children's education. You're not going to, at this point in time, be able to do that in a government-run school. Get them out. Get them into a private school. Get them into some kind of a homeschooling situation. If it's not, if you live in an area where they're not supportive of homeschooling, where they come after you, get out of that area. Your children are important enough that you need to preserve them. You need 